This is a video about the nine Air Force EOD mission sets. I will be giving the by the book definition of each mission set as well as my own personal experience as an EOD technician in the Air Force for the past six years. According to AFMAN 32-3001, the U.S. Air Force EOD program has nine mission sets. Aerospace systems slash vehicles and conventional munitions, counter IED or improvised explosive devices, combating WMDs or weapons of mass destruction, nuclear response, UXO recovery operations, UXO is unexploded ordnance, operational range clearances, defense support to civil authorities or DISCA, irregular warfare, and VIPSA, very important persons, protective support. The first mission set that AFMAN 32301 lists in no particular order of priority is aerospace systems slash vehicles and conventional munitions. The manual defines this as a mission that supports sortie generation and space operations by responding to airfield emergencies to render safe ordnance and aircraft during in-flight and ground emergencies or crash situations. Additionally, EOD provides evaluation, diagnosis, render safe, recovery, and final disposal of conventional munitions involved in an accident or incident. Put simply, this means that EOD is there to support airplanes in the Air Force flying missions, be it training or operational. Airplanes in the Air Force carry ordnance such as bombs, rockets, and missiles, and sometimes these fail to function as designed off of the aircraft. Therefore, the plane is forced to make an emergency landing and EOD has to respond to ensure the safety of the ordnance and, if necessary, render it safe and provide final disposition. In other, less common instances, planes carrying ordnance crash and EOD has to respond to make sure that the ordnance is safe or rendered safe, collected, and disposed of properly. More often than not, an EOD response to an aircraft is due to a hung gun or a hung flare. This means whichever weapon system flare or chaff system that the plane has failed to function correctly and we need to show up and render it safe and again if necessary dispose of it. The next mission is counter IED or CIED. The book defines this as to eliminate or mitigate explosive hazards and terrorist slash criminal devices to include missions outside the base boundary or base security zone to enable greater freedom of maneuver for air or surface operations. Perform IED defeat actions to include, but not limited to, weapons caches, in placed IEDs, post blast analysis, provide military authorities with technical intelligence, analyze and exploit IEDs, provide key insights to enable development of counter IED tactics, techniques, procedures, and to mitigate IED effectiveness. If you know anything about EOD, I feel like this mission set kind of doesn't really require an explanation. It's what everybody sees when they Google EOD. It's what everybody's recruited to do, and it's what they make movies about. Anyone who is interested in EOD is going to know what this mission set entails. There are two types of counter IED responses, permissive and non-permissive, one of which is typically a stateside suspect package response, where you're in a safe location, there are no enemies nearby, and it's most likely a false alarm. Stateside counter IED responses are incredibly rare, and to the extent of my knowledge, the only one that has happened in recent history was at, I believe, Travis Air Force Base, where a guy with a truck and some propane tanks in the back of it ran the gate and detonated the propane tanks. This resulted in the suspect simply setting himself on fire and burning to death, and nobody actually got hurt. The other variety of counter IED responses are of the overseas type, meaning you're in a deployed location, there are hostiles around, and it was most likely an IED placed in the ground by a terrorist. Again, this is the type of mission that they make movies about. I feel like everybody, for the most part, knows what it is and it doesn't require a very in-depth explanation. For the most part, you'll roll outside the base with a security escort, armed up, and you'll respond to the IED and either render it safe load in place, and then gather evidence for prosecution and investigative intelligence purposes. Again, personally, I've never done this mission. Uh, I've been in six years. I've never deployed. I'm deploying here shortly within the next couple of weeks, but it is to a rear base where this mission will definitely not happen. As of 2012, 2013, this isn't really a mission set anymore for Air Force EOD. It's definitely dying out. 
there's not much of a war going on anymore, therefore they don't need counter IED, Air Force EOD techs as much as they used to. If it's 2020 and you're about to join Air Force EOD, I wouldn't expect to do this mission for the most part. That being said, you well train extensively in this mission set. It's a lot of fun, a lot of fun to train in, and it's uh, something that's really cool that you get to do. If something of this nature does kick off again, you will of course be qualified and expected to perform this mission. Combating WMDs, or Weapons of Mass Destruction. During deployments, UD forces provide response capability to nuclear, biological, chemical, radiological, incendiary, or conventional explosive ordnance and IEDs. Peacetime UD force WMD response efforts are limited to initial threat confirmation, risk management, and situational awareness through passive diagnostics. However, UD forces may also provide additional technical support as required. So WMD, in short, is defined as a weapon of mass destruction. There are tons of different agencies, branches, and organizations that define WMDs as something different. Generally in the Air Force, we define it as an IED or a dispersal device that spreads contamination in the form of nuclear, biological, chemical, or radiological hazards. This is a mission set that has been very few and far between in the past, and as a present and future EOD tech, it's something that you probably won't deal with. The book says in a deployed environment, you are fully qualified and capable of dealing with a WMD and you will complete this mission set if you come across a WMD. If you are a peacetime EOD force, stateside, you are limited in your capacity, meaning you're probably not going to do much of this mission, even if you do come across a WMD. Again, personally, I've never completed a WMD mission. None of my peers have ever completed a WMD mission, and I don't foresee us doing so in the future anytime soon. Nuclear Weapon Response all regular Air Force EOD flights and ARC EOD units with primary installation response requirements will provide immediate initial support to nuclear weapon accidents or incidents in order to mitigate risk, provide site stabilization, and situational awareness. So, to put it simply, the Air Force has nukes. The Air Force has planes that carry nukes, and there are Air Force bases with nukes at them. If you are an EOD tech station at an Air Force base with nukes, you're going to be required to respond to nuclear accidents and incidents. That's for the most part going to be your main mission set and you're going to train extensively in nuclear response operations. A nuclear response operation can be anything from a maintainer dropping a nuclear device off of a carrying rack, a pilot accidentally dropping a nuke off of a plane or losing one, and of course if you're familiar with Hollywood, a rogue terrorist organization somehow stealing a nuclear device, prompting the United States government to send a team to recapture it, and as an EOD tech you'll have to go and make sure that nothing's been tampered with or damaged. I've never been stationed at a nuke base before, therefore I've never gone on a nuclear response call. However, we do train for it a couple times a year for uh, emergencies and extremely rare situations. The next two mission sets are UXO recovery operations and operational range clearances. UXO recovery operations are defined as Air Force EOD providing emergency response to neutralize hazards from incidents involving explosives that present a threat to operations, installations, personnel, or material. This includes, but is not limited to, evaluation of individual ordnance items, support of development and operational ordnance slash weapons system testing, and large-scale rapid airfield damage recovery. A UXO recovery operation is one of the most common missions you'll do as an EOD tech. Here in Florida where I'm stationed, it usually ends up being something washing up on the beach or somebody finding something in their dead relative's house. Again, a UXO is simply unexploded ordnance. Ordnance meaning some sort of military produced explosive items such as a rocket, projectile, landmine, bomb, grenade, guided missile, flare, any military item of the explosive variety that needs to be handled with extreme care. Like I said, it's pretty common, more common than most people would believe. Personally, I've been on plenty of these calls. Uh, one of the more exciting ones for our shop, I unfortunately didn't get to go on, but a 100 pound photo flash bomb washed up on the beach in St. Pete, Florida and we sent a team out there to respond to it. For this particular item, it could not be rendered safe or moved, therefore we had to blow it in place on the beach in St. Pete. It was a pretty big deal. The news teams were out there and uh, we got a lot of credibility and publicity for it. More often than not though, it's just a flare that washes up on the beach or uh, an old armor piercing round with no explosives in it that somebody finds in their grandpa's basement. Moving on to range clearances. Obviously in the Air Force, we have pilots. 
pilots fly planes with ordnance items on them that they drop on the enemy. And much like a soldier on a shooting range, a pilot needs to practice shooting his weapons at the enemy from the air. To accomplish this, the United States Air Force has several huge Air Force bombing ranges throughout the United States. Due to the nature of explosives and explosive ordnance, there is an inherent dud rate in all U.S. ordnance. This means of the millions and millions of rounds that we drop each year, many of them do not detonate. And it's up to Air Force EOD techs to go out on these ranges and clear all the dud items so that our contractors and range personnel can get out to the targets and replace them and maintain the ranges for the pilots to practice on. It's definitely one of the coolest and most common missions we get to do. To put it simply, you get to go out into the desert for two weeks with all your best friends you get to ride around on four-wheelers, you get to bring beer, you get to grill out every night, and you get to blow shit up all day. It's really cool. There are several Air Force bases throughout the United States with really big EOD shops where these ranges are, and if you're lucky, you'll get to get stationed at one of them and do this mission all the time. If you're a little bit unlucky, uh, you'll get stationed at a base that doesn't have a range, and unfortunately, you only get to do range clearances such as these a couple times in your first enlistment. For example, again, I've been in for six years now and I've only gotten to do a range clearance twice. That's because I'm stationed at a base that doesn't have a large operational range for a pilot's practice. There are a couple subsets of these two mission sets, one being large scale rapid airfield damage recovery. I'm fairly certain that that's something that's never happened before. Uh, for some reason, there's been a big push towards this training wise in our career field lately. And the other is research and development operations, which follows, which falls under operational range clearance support. And it's a, it's a pretty cool mission set. It happens a, a little bit more frequently. Um, you basically get to go out there and help the really smart guys and scientists test out new, new ordnance, new explosives, and you run a bunch of tests on them, and it's, it's really cool. Defense Support to Civil Authorities. The book defines this as assist federal and civil authorities with terrorist or other criminal acts, accidents, found explosive items, and other requests for support. This mission regards immediate response authority operations. This mission set's kind of hard to explain. It somewhat falls under UXO responses and counter ID responses off base if there ever was one in which we had to support the civil authorities. But to sum it up, if a civil authority otherwise known as the police or a federal agency like the FBI or the ATF, needs our help, they'll ask us for help and we'll help them under the Defense Support Civil Authorities mission set. 99% of the time, this is just a UXO call off base. One of the cooler DISCA responses I got to do was uh, in response to the ATF finding like 4,000 pounds of bootleg explosives in some guy's storage facility. And we got to partner with them and take them out to one of our bombing ranges here in Central Florida and help them dispose of all that. It was, uh, it was pretty cool, it was a good time. Okay, regular warfare. Much like non-permissive counter IED operations, this isn't really a thing for Air Force EOD anymore since 2012, 2013. But the manual describes it as EOD teams serve as combat enablers to general purpose and special operations forces in, in execution of various irregular warfare missions to include security force assistance, counterinsurgency, stability operations, and building partnership capacity. All this means is that in some cases we can attach to special operations forces and help them do their mission as an EOD component and as a shooter. Once again, I've never done this mission set. None of my peers have ever done this mission, sh mission set. And and I don't see us doing this mission set in the foreseeable future. That being said, I do know a couple guys who have done it recently. These two guys picking up this mission was extremely rare and the only reason they got to do so was because they had a lot of combat experience prior to 2013, 2012. I know this is what they make movies out of, it's what they recruit people to do, it's what the posters show, but more than likely you're not going to be doing this mission, nor will you ever. The final Air Force EOD mission set, according to Air Force Manual 32-3001, is Very Important Persons Protective Support. This is defined as EOD flights providing counter-explosive search teams in support of the Secret Service and the Department of State. Personally, 90% of the work I've done in the Air Force has not been related to any of these mission sets. Of the 10% that has, 90% of this 10% has been VIPSA work. VIPSA are pretty cool. Uh, you essentially get to be a Secret Service guy for a little while. Uh, 
You do a lot of traveling. You don't wear a uniform, and for these missions, it's an EOD team leader, an EOD team member, and an explosive detecting dog, and of course the dog's handler. Most of the time, these missions are in support of president, vice president, the first family, and other important politicians and people. And what you do is arrive beforehand and do an extensive explosive search of everything. The primary goal of these searches is to either find or function any possible explosive device that could have been placed here in anticipation of whichever important person showing up. Once your search is complete, a Secret Service post sitter will secure the area and it'll be watched 100% of the time until whichever important person leaves. It's a really cool mission set. Like I said, you get to travel a lot. I've been all over the country for these missions. I've been to the opposite side of the world for these missions. It's a really cool thing that you get to do. You don't wear a uniform. Sometimes you wear a suit. More often than not, you're wearing uh, just a polo shirt and khaki pants, and you get to experience a lot of cool locations, a lot of cool cities. You get to meet people throughout the career field. It really is an awesome mission set, and probably I would describe it as the main mission of Air Force EOD right now. That may be a little bit biased. I'm in a very Vipsa heavy shop. But again, it is predominantly the most frequent EOD mission that I accomplish as an EOD tech. Other than that, when we're not training, we're usually doing some sort of clerical or inspection and inventory work. As you can imagine, we have a lot of equipment, a lot of tools that need to be inspected and maintained. So much so that it takes up the majority of our time as Air Force EOD technicians. In summary, in my experience, unless you're at a base with planes, you're not going to do much aerospace recovery missions. You're not going to do any counter IED or WMD missions. Unless you're at a nuke base, you're not going to deal with nukes. You're going to do quite a bit of UXO recovery operations. If you're at a range base, you'll do a lot of range clearances. If you're not at a range base, you'll do one a couple times in six, seven, ten years. Like I said, DISCA mostly falls under UXO response. You're not going to do any sort of irregular warfare. You're going to do a lot of VIT missions, and most of your time will be spent doing training, clerical work, or inspections and inventories. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something from it. My goal here was to give a more realistic viewpoint on what you'll experience as an EOD tech if you're a recruit trying to join Air Force EOD. 